Okay, um, as we don't have an audio version of this, I'm going to read uh, the handout for the 25th of November, the International Day Against Violence Against Women, or, well, in Spain we coined the term gender violence and it's becoming international too. Remember that domestic violence is not gender violence, okay? We can talk about that in class. And so, um, I found this article in, uh, um, in, on a blog called rejectedprincesses.com and it's, um, it's uh, devoted to the Mirabal sisters and dedicated to them too. The sisters who toppled a dictatorship. I would like you to notice um, and to identify the kind of text this is, okay? Okay, I also suggested my uh, my basico those students and and other teachers basico those students if they if they dare to try to adapt this uh, advanced text uh, into a basico those into a pre intermediate version as an a mediation activity. Okay, okay, there I go. The Mirabel sisters. Uh, they were born in 1924, 1927, and 1923, and they all, the three of them died in 1960. Uh, so there I go. The Dominican Republic of the 1950s was a totalitarian nightmare, obsessively controlled by cruel dictator Rafael Trujillo, a man for whom no slight was too small, no grudge too big, the nation's citizens quickly grew fearful of expressing any dissent. It was not until a group of sisters slapped Trujillo in the face, both literally and figuratively, that the nation finally found the courage to follow their example and oust the despot. These women were the Mirabal sisters, and they willingly gave their lives to end Trujillo's. The Mirabals were from a relatively well-to-do provincial family. The sisters, Minerva, Patria, Maria Teresa and Dede, all went to Catholic boarding school, married good men, had children, went to church. In short, not obvious candidates for revolutionaries. But Trujillo was a true monster. He used his secret police and extensive spy network to keep the nation's eyes open and mouths shut. He owned or directly controlled much of the country's most vital utilities, the radio, the mail, the press, the airlines, and the passport office. Those who spoke out against him often died in unexplained, brutal circumstances. There's a footnote, okay? Uh, at the end of this text, you will find footnotes. However, it was Trujillo's vicious lust that pit him directly against the Mirabals. Throughout his reign, Trujillo employed scores of beauty scouts to scour the countryside for young girls, often very young, for him to romance, kidnap, and or rape. One such mission resulted in him forcing the Mirabals to come one night to his parties. Minerva soon realized that she was his target and politely turned down his entreaties. When he forced, this, when he forced the issue, she slapped him in the face, gathered her family, and got the hell out of the Dutch. And got the hell out of Dodge. Thereafter, Minerva struggled as Trujillo personally toyed with her, with her life. Sorry. Despite being a brilliant student, upon starting her second year at law school, Minerva found she was barred from classes until she gave a public speech extolling Trujillo's virtues. When she graduated years later, summa cum laude no less, the government denied her the license to practice law. Minerva's parents were not spared either. Shortly after Minerva first refused Trujillo's advances, her father was imprisoned. After a, pre a period of brutal treatment, he was released, only to die shortly thereafter. 
Sometime later, Minerva and her mother, on a visit to the capital of Santo Domingo, were kept as virtual prisoners in their hotel. Minerva learned that if she slept with Trujillo, they would be released. She refused. Eventually, she and her mother escaped. Gradually, Trujillo's, Trujillo's wrath also turned Patria, Maria Teresa, and their husbands into activists. With the, Mirabal uh, with the Mirabal family finances ruined by Trujillo's meddling and the family's ev every word monitored, the entire Mirabal clan were primed for transformation. The final push into all-level, sorry, all-out rebellion came after a failed attempt by exiled Dominicans to oust Trujillo. The Mirabals denied now decided to continue the work. They distributed pamphlets, gathered materials for weapons, and even made makeshift, makeshift, sorry, oh my God, sorry, makeshift bombs out of firecrackers around Minerva's kitchen table. Collectively, the three activist sisters became known by the code name Las Mariposas, the Butterflies. When their attempt to assassinate Trujillo at a 1960 cattle fair was exposed, the entire group was thrown in jail. Due to international pressure stemming for, from some of Trujillo's dumber moves, the women were quickly released. When Trujillo's political fortunes continued to worsen, despite all the male co conspirators being imprisoned, he began to blame the Mirabal sisters for all his problems, and so he ordered them killed. The assassination of the Mirabals was a clumsy, brutal affair. First, Trujillo transferred their jailed husbands to a remote jail that required travel across a mountain range. The three activist sisters knew this was a trap. Their friends begged them not to visit their husbands, but they did so anyways. And true enough, when they did, secret police ambushed their jeep in the mountain pass. Knowing their ends were at hand, Patria ran to a nearby truck, told the driver who they were and that they were about to get killed and to spread the word. The truck quickly sped off. The three activist Mirabal sisters were killed shortly thereafter. The secret police strangled and beat them, then put them back into the jeep and threw it over a cliff to make it look like an accident. Despite clear fingerprints all over the vehicle and the obvious tra trauma on the Mirabal's bodies, despite clear fingerprints all over the vehicle and the obvious trauma on the Mirabal's bodies. The Mirabal's deaths served as a catalyst for overthrowing Trujillo. Six months later, military leaders assassinated him. Although many factors were at play in Trujillo's downfall, in the words of one historian, the coward the uh, his historian, the cowardly killing of three beautiful women of, of three women, of three human beings, in su well, no, she's quoting, I understand, okay, in such a manner had greater effect on Dominicans than most of Trujillo's other crimes. It did something to their machismo. They could never forgive Trujillo, uh, they could never forgive Trujillo this crime. In the years following, the Mirabal sisters have become a la hallowed icons hallowed icons, like Halloween, okay, hallowed icons for the Dominican Republic. Dede, the sister who had not participated as actively and survived Trujillo's reign, raised uh, her late sister's children, many of whom entered the government. Virtually all Dominican towns today bear some commemorative marker, school, or street bearing the names of the Mirabal sisters. Their home province was even renamed Hermanas Mirabal, an ironic uh, inversion of Trujillo's renaming the capital city Ciudad Trujillo, a name that did not stick.
Gradually, their fame spread internationally. In 1994, novelist Julia Alvarez commemorated their story with her historical fiction novel In the Time of the Butterflies, which imagined much of the smaller details of their story that were lost to time. In 2001, the book was adapted into a movie of the same name, starring Salma Hayek. And on every November, the, um, um, and on every 25th of November, the date of their assassination, the world celebrates the United Nations designated International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women in their honor. Well, I hope you can learn to read with with good pronunciation this wonderful uh, text by uh, by this blogger who I hope to contact as soon as I can, rejectedprincesses.com, uh, okay? Uh, and then uh, I created an exercise so you can reflect on, on some textual matters. You, you've also got the footnotes on my page, okay? Here on my handout, sorry. See you.